Studying and learning were what Vassar was all about. And we students had a very special relationship with the outstanding members of our Vassar faculty. Unlike some colleges, Vassar's was a teaching faculty. Our professors not only taught classes, they were always available to us outside of class as well. And in many cases, they became not only our advisors and mentors, but also our friends. How did we feel about them? And who were the teachers who influenced us most? What were some of the greatest and most memorable courses we took? Helen Drusilla Lockwood, to me, was uh, utterly extraordinary. I was in awe of her. The, the teacher that probably had the most profound impact on me was uh, Helen Drusilla Lockwood. Every favorite teachers, definitely Miss Lockwood. Mm -hmm. She was tough. Mm -hmm. She had expected a lot of independent work from you. Yeah. Um, and it was a lot of discussion. And she didn't want you just to feed back to her what she believed. Mm -hmm. She really wanted you to think and form opinions. Mm -hmm. Well, I had Helen Lockwood for a, oh. yeah, I took her, one of her grueling seminar courses. One of the things I always remember is Helen Drusilla Lockwood, yeah. who I just <laughs> loved and who I did my thesis for, and I did a lot of work in her classes, and I really admired her. People would say their father told them something was right. What? <laughs> she wouldn't let you get away with case. Say to me, why are you thinking about that, Miss Litsky? <laughs> what made you say that, Miss Litsky? <laughs> Helen Drusilla Lockwood, the one and only. In some ways, she became a, a mentor to me. Helen Lockwood and Ruth Elson were my advisors on my uh, thesis. And they all, they never could agree. Yeah. Nelson, who was an historian, would say, this, you can't say this, it's too opinionated. And of course, Lockwood would say, go ahead and say it. This is the kind of thing she wanted, because of course, she always wanted you to think for yourself and formulate your ideas and express them. And, and you know, we hear this, whether it's hackneyed or trite statement, that places like Faster, who are liberal arts colleges, aren't there to teach you facts. They're to teach you how to use facts mm -hmm. and think for yourself. Mm -hmm. And certainly her two courses were geared to that, and I loved them. She had a cook. Miss Lockwood had a cook? Miss Lockwood had a cook. It was her one extravagance in life. And you know, I thought, isn't that silly? I would have had so many other different things. But as I've gotten older, I thought, yeah. I can understand that yeah. when I hear a cook. <laughs> she had a lady that came in at night and cooked for her. What did she do for lunch and breakfast? I have no clue. Maybe she knew how to use a toaster. But cooking was definitely not her thing, mm -hmm. and she was very wealthy, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody thought she was a church mouse. Yeah, she left a few million to Vassar. She left a, a significant legacy to mm -hmm. Vassar. When she died, they went into her desk and they found all of these IBM stocks, they found stocks, bonds. You know, the, the woman was a multi-millionaire. No. She went, lived in one stained breast. I, I think one strange thing is, one ironic thing is, that I never took Miss Lockwood's course in contemporary press. Had I known how I was going to end up as a journalist, I certainly should have done that. I would have done that. But I was, I was frightened away from it. Some of the teachers at Vassar were part of the original suffragettes, you know. Oh, right. Miss sure. sure. Lockwood? Yeah. It was a wonderful woman. One of the most intelligent women I've ever known. An, an absolute, unequivocal, left-wing activist who was the head of the English department, Margaret Lockwood. Helen Lockwood, an extraordinary woman. Helen Lockwood would on occasion call her faculty to her house on Sunday morning to have a session on democracy. <laughs> she never, never understood, never realized the kind of contradiction that was, involved, that was involved in that. And I used to come out of that class after a two hour seminar and my stomach would be in a nut. Oh. It was so interesting. She just had you so tense. Mm. Not because she was vicious, but because you just, like I say, you come out of there and you don't shoot your mouth off anymore. Mm -hmm. you, careful in what you say, not because you're going to be attacked for it, but because you're going to have to back up everything yeah, you said. Right. She was a taskmaster, mm -hmm. but fabulous, fabulous teacher. People cried in her class. 
How did she react? She didn't, didn't react at all. Same inscrutable civil sitting there. I mean, she didn't. She no mercy. No mercy. How did she intimidate you? The class was a small one. I don't think there were more than 10 or 15 of us in the class. And she was so insightful. Mm -hmm. She would go around and ask questions. And it wasn't that she did anything to me, but I would watch how she would chew up my classmates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it intimidated me because I didn't particularly want to get chewed up that way. Mm -hmm. Actually, she made me much less apt to talk about things. I, I, she, in her class, you didn't get up and open your mouth unless you could pretty much back up what you mm -hmm. had said, either with sources or with some sort of basis. You didn't just get up and shoot off your mouth. Yeah. That made a profound effect on me. And she really drummed that into us, and uh, I think in a very positive way. She liked me. She invited me to her home. Oh, how nice. A very great honor. Mm. I liked her too. I think I talked back to her a couple of times, and maybe that's what she liked. Who knows? Who was your advisor? Uh, Lockwood. Uh huh. Lockwood. Oh, you must have taken her course in contemporary. Yes, I did. I liked it very much. Yeah. And she, yeah, she made you think. Leon. Mm hmm. Cats. Heart yeah. throb. Everybody <laughs> was in love with him. And Leon Cats, God, I remember him teaching me about Hedda Gabler. He was our advisor. Uh, Prisco and mine for mm -hmm. our senior thesis. Mm -hmm. He was always encouraging, mm -hmm. and, and we f we found it very exciting. And and he made us feel it was exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so glad to know that he's still around. Yeah. And he has a play coming out off Broadway. It's called W and the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, you're kidding. Uh -huh. Oh, I'll have to see that. Yes. That's an in after my own part. <laughs> <laughs> and you said also that you um, you and Priscilla taught him to drive. I specifically taught him to drive, but uh, the three of us, I'm sure, were in on every lesson. We had a unique situation in the drama department, I think, because we got yes. to know them so well. Yes, and doing things with them. With them, yeah. Uh, remember yeah. Margaret Myers? Yes. She was wonderful, and then, of course, I saw her later on in Poughkeepsie. That was fun, well, that's what we had meeting yeah, these people good. as a graduate living in Poughkeepsie. Mm -hmm. We got to know them on a different level. And I had a, got to know the Pearsons, Donald and Kay Pearson, oh, yeah. very well. One uh, professor that was our mutual French teacher, yes. Madame Ross. One of my favorite courses was Thing French I'm drama. Done. We both remember the Alfred de Musset mm -hmm. on the body yes. pas avec l'amour. Yeah. I will never forget it. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. Madame Ross very well. Oh, yes. She had this little boy named Malcolm, and she used to let Malcolm just run wild. He was five years old, and he could do anything he wanted to, including, for his dinner, he could eat with the cat right on the floor. <laughs> and he'd ha drink his milk from the cat's dish. Oh, Jean, how did you ever find out? <laughs> I don't know. Who were the teachers at Vassar that most influenced you? Uh, I think Philip Nockle, Miss mm -hmm. Barber, Mr. Mm -hmm. yeah. Freedies, uh, Professor Venable. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine my life without them. The cats and all the were very important to me. Uh -huh. yeah, and Miss Barbara. Miss Barbara was scared. <laughs> <laughs> How about Chloe Brokaw? Ooh, she was <laughs> fun. She was fun. I took a lot of art history courses. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, I was interested in architecture. Mm -hmm. So I talked to uh, uh, Cats and Ellen Bogan and lots. Mm -hmm. And I really liked those courses a lot. And, I, and they've stuck with me. We had Miss, Miss, Miss Barbara, Barbara, yes. Yeah. Oh yes, she was very stately, wasn't she? Yeah. In the art history department. And then when Miss Barber used to talk about the colors, of the paintings were pistachio green, yeah. strawberry pink. Mm. Which, by the way, I did the same thing with my students. Oh. <gasps> uh, but she was right. Mm -hmm. She was right. I found the faculty extraordinary from the beginning, and I cannot tell you how much I owe to the art department. Although, you know. Uh, Again, at the time, they all seemed in their various ways um, peculiar or something that one could um, ma make fun of in a way. And like Miss Barber and Miss Brokaw. Well, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, um, Miss Barber was certainly the target of all our imitations. Yes. You know, absolutely like that. And uh, as for Miss Brokaw, 
she would insist that we would go swimming with her as well. Mm. Uh, they taught me or taught me to see or taught me a kind of uh, differentiation and honesty of seeing that has served me for whatever I may have done since. Betty Daniels was always, she was very intimidating to me. She was so brilliant. Uh -huh. She was so forthright. Uh -huh. She's the kind of teacher that even though you never had her as a teacher, you never forget her. Contact she was so intellectually challenging. Miss Tim, Miss Tim, Miss Tim, 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 and Miss Mosscrap, Elfrida Mosscrap. Do you remember Miss, I call her Miss Mosscrap. Mosscrap, Mosscrap, Mosscrap. Yeah, we call her Mosscrap. I remember that one. Mr. Bartlett had these very socialistic ideas about socialized medicine. Barbara Cohn Crane and I, whose fathers were in the medical profession, were vehemently opposed to socialized medicine. And we got into a big argument with Mr. Bartlett. And it was only years later, when I was living in Belgium, where there was a socialized medical system, where I realized that this was not so bad. And I decided to write Mr. Bartlett. And I said, dear, Professor Bartlett. This is a belated love letter of sorts. I want to tell you that you were right. And I tried to conjure up this, this old discussion we had had many years earlier. He was very sweet. He wrote me back. I enjoyed studying with uh, Professor Carl Daigler. What he inspired me. I lived in Lathrop, and our faculty families um, added a lot. They sure did. Uh, and. We do have faculty on our campus where many places do not at all. I think our faculty, the fact that they did get, devote so much time to us and had time outside of the classroom meant a lot to us. Yes. That, God. Yeah. I did have a lot of some courses. That, uh, I remember I took a geology course in order to avoid a math course and I loved it and that stuck with me too. Mm -hmm. Dr. Wilson was delightful mm -hmm. and uh, we had a good time and I, I can still I, you know, remember some of the things and it enhances what I look at as a result. I just remember uh, my art classes and my music classes. Professor Barber and Claflin were probably two of the best uh, teachers I've ever had. Did you take Art 105? Yeah. Yeah, I did too. And mm -hmm. that was hard too. I've told Henri, who taught art history, I said, you know, the way we studied at Vassar was so boring because we had to memorize all these slides. He said, that's the only way to do it. And that's why you know art history. And art, I have uh, been, ever since Art 105, so enamored of the visual arts that I have just learned a lot. My mom and dad said, well, you have to take at least some music and art or you aren't. Uh, you can't say you've gone to a liberal arts college and you aren't prepared for the world. And now we're very, very interested in art and, and involved with Art and Science Museum. So, I, you know, it's all dovetailed and been put together. It was Susan Duckworth. She was in the chemistry department, but she was neat and we had a lot of fun with her. Hmm. We used to get her to drive us into New York to go to the City Center Ballet. Uh -huh. she, she was Oh, very nice, friendly sort. I loved languages and I started studying Russian my sophomore year and very quickly became enamored of it. It was a tiny department, wonderful Ekaterina Volkonskaya, uh, who, who will all remember. Two other professors I remember very clearly. One was C. Gordon Post. I he made an enormous impression. And the other one was Rudolf Kempton. And I had Mr. Post. Oh, he was wonderful. Oh, he was wonderful. And Mr. Post was somebody I did really appreciate, taught me constitutional law. And the interesting thing about him is, 20 years later, when I applied to Syracuse University, I called him and asked him to write a recommendation, and he was so wonderful. He and Mr. Bartlett, who mm -hmm. had been my freshman English teacher. I had Mr. Post. Yeah. I had administration of justice. I had, he taught a lot of the, the Political Science 101 courses. Mm -hmm. This monster, majestic gentleman standing there in front yes. of all these little college freshmen. He was, yeah, uh, six foot six. Yeah, and with his baritone voice. Yes. Yeah, no, he was very impressive. Did you ever guy. see him act? 
Yes, I remember mm -hmm. him in the Crucible. Uh huh. He yes. was wonderful. I thought they were extraordinary individuals, especially the women, wonderful mm -hmm. role models mm -hmm. for us. Miss Barber. Mm hmm. And, Chloe uh, Brokaw. Yeah, Miss Brokaw. Still very dangerous. I think she had studied with, with Heidegger, I mm -hmm. think. But Mrs. Venerable was wonderful. Yeah. And I had her husband also in philosophy. Uh huh. I loved him. I mean, the, the faculty at Vassar, they, they really were, were amazing. They I think that the faculty that I became friendly with, uh, who I saw, really couldn't have been finer. We really lived with the faculties and we had tea every afternoon and really had mostly professors there. But what always amazed me was how a teacher can stimulate and ask you questions according to your intellectual ability. Uh-huh. You know, and, and try to challenge you to reach and and to go farther than you think you can intellectually yes. but not be over your head. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was astounding to be a teacher at a college level, mm -hmm. you know, and be able to do that. Yes. Just extraordinary. And I guess you appreciate that more and more. I Agnes Rinch Claflin, Mrs. Claflin, was she more than anyone in the United States, and therefore Vassar more than any other uh, college, university, academic setting in the United States, imaginative and determined in bringing out the, the great art historical uh, minds, uh, refugees from Germany. Out of Katzen Ellenbogen, who we all remember that she brought, she brought Richard Krautheimer was, and Professor Lotz. Vassar was the place where the great stars of uh, uh, art history came before they were integrated into scholarly life. Panos Urban Panofsky was also uh, very much with us at Vassar. <laughs> and we, uh, to, we gave a festival, a medieval and renaissance festival, in his honor at Vassar. This uh, freshman English creative writing teacher who didn't buy my act, and so I wrote a story, and it was actually a story about an episode where my father couldn't find his uh, studs for his dinner clothes, and my mother, who's somewhat of a passive aggressive, found five sets before giving it any, and he got so many through them out of the window anyway. So I wrote a story about this and this whole scene and the denouement and the teacher said, well, you know, you can, really can't write stories about people who are insane because people have to relate to the people in the story. <laughs> and these people are obviously crazy. <laughs> I've never had the nerve to tell them that, they, that I hadn't even made it up. They were, they were perfectly, <laughs> Your family. <laughs> perfectly my family. Were perfect, uh, I had never considered insane until she had suggested that was the case. But, uh, I think well, they were Southern. <laughs> they were Southern, of course. They were eccentric. I was one of Carl Degler's groupies. Drama class was my my most enjoyable, and I quite liked Professor Heinlein. Miss Heinlein, yeah. yeah. She was wonderful. They influenced me so much. But it was an extraordinary group of professors. Yeah. In the years of our class, we had available to us really the most innovative and important figures mm -hmm. in this field. Yes. And in this, there was always Mrs. Claflin, mm -hmm. who, as you remember, would teach Art 105 on Friday afternoons dressed in a flowered tea gown and a hat uh, because she was ready to go down to New York for a cocktail party. Mm -hmm. She and the others were following and nurturing us in the most astonishing mm -hmm. fashion. Yes. And you were a child study major at Vassar? I was a child study Do major. Do you remember Mrs. Langmuir? Sure. Oh. Well, Mary Fisher Langmuir was just an extraordinary woman, and mm -hmm. so was the education department of Vassar. Mm -hmm. It was a very fine education, um, mm -hmm. a very specific philosophical approach to child behavior and child rearing, which was one of the reasons that I was able to teach at Bank Street. Another teacher that I was in great awe of was Mabel Newcomer, uh -huh. and of course she was my economics teacher. Yes. And she was a woman of world renown. After World War II, she helped establish the monetary system that, that was established in Germany. Uh -huh. It was at Bretton Woods. Mm -hmm. Bretton Woods. And so yeah. she was a woman of real renown in the field of economics. Uh -huh. Here's my book. 
Oscar Wilde's America, Counterculture in the Gilded Age. And on the back of this book, there is a little blurb from our friend Carl Degler. Yes. Vassar has meant a lot without the push from Vassar and from Carl Degler. This would never, never have happened. It's in, it's changed my life. Myra, do you remember Mr. Degler? Yeah, Carl Degler. Yeah. He was our house fellow. Right. I thought he would have a huge career. And Mrs. Langyard, yes. Yes. Sure. Child study, and right. she coined the TLC. Those that was her. Oh. Really? I took both Art 105 and, uh, and Music 140. They were two of the great courses, along with Philosophy 105. And then Music 140. I think of Vassar all the time when I go to classes, go to concerts. Now when I go to Philharmonic, I say to myself, ah, the violins are answering the woodwinds. And, you know, just everything <laughs> that we learned. And yeah. just, the, you know, Vassar so enriched my life. Mm -hmm. I can remember thinking how wonderful um, the opportunity was that we had. And I remember sitting down after <coughs> the conclusion of sophomore year with the catalog and thinking, we'd have to stay for nine more years just to take a sampling of all the courses yes. we thought that might be interesting. professors, Leon Katz and Lena Manka. Leon is now 87 years old and Lena is 88 this year, 2006. We asked them both what they thought of Vassar students. Here's what they had to say. Vassar students are extremely receptive, very open. They cultivated, responded to everything that the students were. They were so talented. It was a very intelligent group of students, very intelligent all together. Fortunate, I found myself wonderful student, knowledgeable, intelligent, responded immediately to artistic performance.